Hey, what's up? Welcome to DGen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of this is financial advice. Just me having fun looking at charts like the chart behind me, which is of Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR. And here we are looking at the daily time frame, which I meant to have on the weekly time frame. And here we can see uh, that it looks like we might be putting in a bull flag, but there are a couple concerning things about it. Uh, but before I get into that and the daily chart, I did want to point out that Palantir closed the week at a price of $24.93, being down just a little more than a half a percent on Friday, and over the course of the week being up about 8.5% with this big green candle. And so one of the things that does stand out to me as being a little concerning is that we keep seeing these wick highs. We're not getting closes above them, and so that does suggest there are not many buyers up here. With the close of the week being right around $25, it does not look like buyers are stepping in above that level. So that could suggest that we are forming a top. And so with these previous highs, like with this one for the week ending February 9th, uh, the high of that was $25.11 the following week, $25.53, and now we have put in a new high at $25.69, which is actually a pretty exciting level that we hit just a penny off from what I had expected or suggested we would hit in last week's video. So I think that's really cool. I'm excited to go over that. Uh, but some stronger things that do stand out about this, now, we did have a low for the week of $22.94, which was just slightly lower than the close of last week at $22.97. Uh, but the open for the week this week was $23.03. So I do think that's good that we did open the week higher than last week's close. However, if we would have opened lower than it, that would be a bullish engulfing candle. And so that could be a good thing to have seen. Uh, but you know, we didn't see that. Instead, we saw eight and a half percent up on the week. So I do think that is good. Uh, but you know, we do want to be seeing closes higher than the previous highs. And since we haven't been able to do that over the course of these past three weeks, I do think we might be seeing a top. And another thing that does stand out to me as a topping signal, just got to move uh, this out of the way so Ed isn't blocking it. If you do notice, uh, we have been putting in higher highs in the stock price. However, if you notice with the RSI, we have been putting in lower highs, even though we're getting to new highs here, new 52 week highs, uh, we are not getting higher RSIs. And so that is bearish divergence. However, you know, if stock price does go up higher next week, like to $27, uh, the RSI could go higher and put in a new higher high uh, that would have to be higher than 77.36 to be putting in a higher high and uh, negate this bearish divergence that we're currently seeing. Uh, so considering it, this is on the weekly time frame, I do think that looks kind of bad, but it might be weeks before we see the top actually play out. And within that time, price could go higher. Uh, but to get into that, the nitty gritty of the chart, let's switch over to the daily time frame, And I'm just going to throw up the drawings that I've gone over in previous videos. I did add a Fibonacci retracement and I do want to adjust one. Uh, but one thing that I did want to point out is this orange level that is based on the uh, 1618 extension from this retracement was at a price of $25.68. And in last week's video, I did suggest that price could be getting that high. And so the high on Friday was just one penny off of that, going one penny above it. And so for me personally, I don't have a large or didn't have a large Palantir position, uh, but I did have a limit order placed at $25.68 and it was filled on Friday, and I didn't realize until after close that the high was just one cent above that. So I thought that was pretty remarkable uh, just to see how these Fibonacci levels do play out and that they are really useful in identifying key levels. However, I did also note this level, the 2618 from, let's see, 
this Fibonacci retracement, the extension up to there at $24.77. I did note that in last week's video and I also trimmed my position there. Uh, so, you know, I could have made more money if I held onto those shares up until uh, $25.68. But, you know, I like to ease into my positions. I also like to ease out of them. And so I was pretty proud of that. Uh, but, you know, since we did put in a new high for this run up, um, I do think it would be good to adjust the uh, top of this retracement. So not going from the high that was hit on February 12th, which was $25.53. I'm actually going to adjust that to 25. Oops, that should have been at $25.53. So right here. Uh, but in preparing for this video, I had adjusted it and it uh, got the wrong number in there. But anyways, there's uh, 2569. So that is adjusted to the top over here now. And so with that, we can look at some of the levels from that retracement that might act as support to the downside. And so one of those, the first level down really is the 236. And that is at a price of $23 and 41 cents. Uh, and then also, you know, the 382, that is at a convenient price of $22 exactly. And that does lie right between uh, this orange line at $21.85, as well as the 2618 extension from this Fibonacci retracement at a price of $22.10. So I do think that $22 is a good level to be keeping an eye on. But since we do have this uptrending level of support, marked by this dashed line uh, and the 236 those levels kind of coinciding over here right around the same price I do think that will be acting as support so I feel like it's doubtful that we will be seeing $22 in the near term perhaps over the next week I think we might get a test of the 236 here at $23.41 uh, before getting another bounce but I do think that bounce might be a final one because even on this shorter time frame here, we did put in a higher high uh, with the stock price, but the RSI is a lower high. So again, that is bearish divergence. That does suggest to me that we will be seeing price going lower, that it is getting pretty exhausted up here right around $25 a share. And also on the note of exhaustion, we can see that the volume has died down a lot since this big move up. And so that suggests to me there aren't buyers, you know, aggressively pushing the stock price higher and people are taking profits up here. And so eventually uh, there aren't going to be any more buyers up here and this is going to start to collapse. I do think ultimately that this will be coming down to right around $18 a share, but I do think that there will be opportunities to swing this on the way down, just like there were opportunities to swing on the way down from the last run up. And then so finally, I do just wanna go over this Fibonacci retracement that I have grayed out. I'm just gonna bring it back into picture here. And so we can look at some of the levels uh, kind of finer tuned that do actually complement this yellow retracement here. And so one of those levels coming down from 25.53 is the 786, and that is at a price of $24.84. And that currently does look like it is acting as support along with $24.77. But given the signs that this does look like it's getting exhausted, I do think that level of support will be breaking over the next week, and we might be getting a test of the 382 or the 236, uh, which are right around the range of 23 to 2350. And that would again coincide with this uptrending dashed level of support. So I could see price returning there before perhaps one last attempt at $27 a share. But, you know, I should also note that it is quite possible that this red candle day that we're seeing for Friday is possibly a fake out because we have held above these levels of support. And it is quite possible that price could be breaking higher on Monday, having given a signal that it looks like we're putting in a top that could be a fake out before we move higher. And so the 1618 extension from this retracement does happen to be right around the price of $27.53. So that is right around $27, as well as this other extension that I have uh, from the after hours dip 
during the earnings call, and that is at a price of $27.31. So really in the range from $27 to $27.50, it is quite possible that price will be going up there, but I do think that would be a blow off top and a great time to exit because I do think, as I had mentioned, that we will eventually be returning to $18 a share, but that does not mean that I'm bearish on the company. I just think that the stock needs to cool off a little bit uh, before making you know new highs. Uh, and so with that being said, I do think that $23.50, $23 could be a good dip buying opportunity for that last final test of these levels up here right around $27. Uh, but following that, I do think we might be finding some support around $22, maybe get a bounce and then test this uptrend as resistance before continuing down to like right around $21 a share or $20 a share on our way down to 18. But you know, those are just my thoughts. If you found them helpful, make sure you like the video, share your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching.